Welcome to today's event as we ready for the 2023 Army-Navy game presented by USAA. My name is Bob Sosi. I've been the broadcaster, the play-by-play -play announcer for the New England Patriots for the last 11 years. And a few days ago, we were headed to the Meadowlands, and I looked out at MetLife Stadium, and my thoughts went back to 1997, approaching Giant Stadium for my first Army-Navy game. An amazing experience I had the chance to relive every year for the next decade and a half in Philadelphia, at the Vet and the Link, in Baltimore, in Landover. And now I'm extremely excited and proud to welcome you here today to Gillette Stadium. And I can't wait to experience the game at home in New England and for you to experience it here as well at the home of the six-time Super Bowl champions. It's our honor and privilege to welcome the academies to Gillette Stadium as America's game comes to New England for the first time in the series 124 game history. The game will be televised nationally by CBS and worldwide on American Forces Network. And Westwood One Radio will feed its broadcast to 300 plus stations throughout the United States. To add to this historic occasion, the Commander in Chief's trophy is on the line. With an Army win, West Point will hold the CIC trophy. With a Navy win, the academies will share the title. It's going to be an awesome experience. I say that from my past and as well my present being part of this organization with the New England Patriots. Without further ado, I'd like to turn things over to the president of the Kraft Group, Jonathan Kraft. Thanks. Welcome, everybody. Uh, can't tell you how exciting uh, this day is for everybody here uh, in our building, and I'll get to that in a minute. But I want to first just start by thanking a lot of people without whom uh, this event would not be possible. And uh, I'll start with our governor, Maura Healy. Uh, it's uh, thank you for everything you've done. We also have our Secretary of uh, Veterans Services, John Santiago, with us, Martha Sheridan from Meet Boston, and I believe Kristen Adamo from uh, the Providence Warwick Visitor and Convention Bureau is here too. So without the state of Massachusetts, without the greater Providence business community, this, would, this event would not be happening. Um, also want to welcome our friends from Army and Navy who are here with us today. I'll do this alphabetically because even though I have a son in the Navy, I am neutral in terms of the outcome of this game. Uh, from Army Lieutenant General uh, Stephen Gillen, who's the Superintendent of West Point, is with us. Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, also, we're fortunate to have with us the Army Athletic Director, Mike Buddy. Uh, and. Well, yeah, Mike, you're sitting, so there you are, you're sitting over here. We have Coach Jeff Monken with us too, and we have captains uh, from Army, I believe, with us. I haven't met them, but Jimmy Charlo, is, and hi, uh, Jimmy, and Leo Lowen, so welcome. Thank you guys for being here at Gillette. From Navy, we have a very uh, memorable face for people in Boston, Chet Gladchuk, the athletic director, Brian Newberry, uh, the head coach, and I haven't met the Navy players either, but I believe that we have Jacob Busick with us. Is that correct, Jacob? Yeah, you're right down in front here. Nice, welcome, welcome to you. We have Will Harbor with us, correct? And uh, also senior quarterback Xavier Arline is with us as well. So welcome to all of you. This day, as I started to say, is just it's a it's a culmination of a long journey for everybody here at Gillette Stadium. When we when we first conceived of building this building in the late 90s, it was clearly to have a permanent home for the Patriots in Massachusetts. But we also wanted to create a venue that would attract events that Massachusetts was not able to attract prior. And literally at the top of that list was the Army Navy game. It, it's taken us a quarter of a century really to make it happen, but it's really been worth it. 
And, and last night, I was at an event in Boston. It's one of the biggest charitable events in the city each year for Children's Hospital Boston called Champions for Children. There must have been 1,400 people. And the energy in the room around this event, which had nothing to do with that event, was palpable. This is all anybody wanted to, to talk to me about. And I can tell you that the ticket demand for this game is greater than any AFC championship game that we've hosted here, greater than Taylor Swift, greater than anything else we've ever seen. So this next week is just going to be so exciting. And, uh, and I think as our, as our organization thinks about it, um, for us, we want to we wanna make sure that we show off the region, the passion that we have for sports, because even though this game has rarely moved out of the mid-Atlantic, the military history that exists here in Massachusetts and New England, it's really deep. The Army and the National Guard, this is the birthplace of both organizations. The Naval's first on-the-water movements in America took place off of the coast of uh, Gloucester, right here in, in Massachusetts. And obviously, the first battles of the Revolutionary War were fought, here, were fought here. So we very much would like to see this become part of the regular tradition and rotation of the game. And on a personal note, growing up, we weren't in the football business, but when, when I was a young boy, when my brothers were young boys, my dad would sit us down each year to watch the Army-Navy game. He loved football. We weren't in the football business, but he'd sit us down to watch it. And, you know, this is in the 70s, and he would explain to us, because we understood Lakers-Celtics, Bruins-Canadians, Red Sox-Yankees, the Patriots really didn't have any rivals in those days. They were really non-existent. And he would explain that Army-Navy was that type of rivalry. And it was a very important game because you had young men who had signed up to defend the country and to play football and be a part of it. But unlike those professional sports rivalries where the players really didn't like each other when they left the field or the rink, um, the men who played in that game, my dad would tell us, they fight hard on the field but they have the utmost respect and trust in each other because they know that when they're done with being at the academies, they're gonna go out and protect and defend this country and have to have blind trust in each other out in the field, making sure that the rest of us can enjoy the types of events that go on today in venues like that behind me. And that, was, that, that really stuck with my brothers and I. Now, we did have a rooting interest at that time because my dad's brother was in the Navy and was a naval surgeon, so we were always rooting for Navy. But we've lost that attachment, and we will be totally neutral next weekend. And I'll just say the, the, the one other thing for us as, as, as a family that we're really proud of is that we have an active reservist in Joe Cardona, an active uh, naval reservist in Joe Cardona, who's on our roster, but each offseason serves. I think he's one of only two or three in the NFL that are in that role. And we're also proud of the fact that Gillette Stadium was the first stadium in America to have a permanent POW MIA seat. After the press conference, if you walk out onto the balconies, you can see the black seat right here in this end zone next to the row of honor where we seat active military men and women each week. And we started that tradition in the NFL, and I'm proud to say that I believe now every stadium in the league has that, so that while we're all enjoying the types of events that go on in venues like this, we all remember the service that all of you are going to be doing and giving to this country. So with that, I would just say we're really excited. We hope this is the first of many times we're welcoming Army, Navy here. And uh, it's now my honor to, to introduce um, our next speaker, who happens to be not only an athlete, but also the governor of our state. Uh, governor Maura Healy, who's a good friend of mine and, and our family, she's very special because she went to Harvard and she played basketball there. And she went on and uh, played professionally in Austria, I believe. 
is before the WNBA existed in this country. So she has that mental toughness and fierce competitiveness. She's very smart because she went to Harvard and graduated cum laude. She probably could have gone to the academies too. Um, she's very smart, she did that, but she has the empathy of somebody that ran the Human Rights Division in our State Attorney General's office before she became Attorney General. And I think when you take world-class intellect with an athlete's competitive nature and heart and mental toughness, but with a real empathy for those who need to be protected, much like the people who serve our country, you get an extraordinary leader. And uh, she's been so helpful to us, both in the planning for this game, but also for our state at large, uh, Governor Maura Healey. Well, good afternoon. Um, Jonathan, thank you so much. Uh, many thanks to, to you and the Kraft family for your continued commitment to this state, to this region, to making our communities and neighborhoods better you know, every single day. A little later on, there's gonna be, as a precursor to America's game, we're gonna be hosting starting today here at Gillette, care of the Kraft family, all of our high school Super Bowls for the rest of the week. So this place is gonna be hopping and, and fantastic. And it's just an example of the continued ways that uh, the Kraft family looks to support the health and betterment and well-being of young people and families across this state. Um, so thank you, Jonathan, for, for all that you and, and your families do. Um, you would be the first to say that um, we are all patriots. Today's a celebration of all patriots, including you know, acknowledging some folks that uh, may root against sometimes the people that play here. Okay, we understand that. But today and this week and this month, we are all patriots. And on behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I just want to welcome everybody to Massachusetts and to this great, great game. Um, Martha Sheridan and Meet Boston, I know that you worked a long, long time, really hard. Talk about putting in the time. Uh, along with the Kraft family to bring this home. Congratulations to you and to the entire team for making this happen. It is super, super exciting for us to know that for the first time in the great and storied history of America's game, it's coming to New England and it's coming to Gillette and that's fantastic. I am really, really proud to be able to serve in this capacity. Um, and one of the reasons I'm, I, I love it so much is the opportunity to work with fantastic people. Um, and that includes our Secretary of Veterans Services. You see here in Massachusetts, though we have some of the oldest services in the country, uh, and we do a great job taking care of veterans, we have a lot of veterans. It wasn't until this administration, and we started in January, that we made the Cabinet Secretary for Veterans Affairs, a cabinet position. And I remember after I got elected, making phone calls to a person who was then stationed in Syria um, last October, last November, asking if he would come home when his tour was over and serve. And so joining us here today and so proud that we are hosting this event is our Secretary of John Santiago, who's a major in the United States Army Reserves and a, um, uh, an ER doctor and trauma surgeon, and is just doing a terrific job as our Veterans Secretary, uh, including most recently announcing uh, important legislation that we filed here just a month ago, the HEROES Act, uh, because in a state that's home to 350,000 veterans and service members, we want to make sure that we are doing everything that we can as a state to support those who serve. It's an honor to, um, as I say, to, uh, to be hosting this as, as a state. Um, you know, the, the, we can talk about, you know, so, some aspects of this, certainly the Army-Navy game is a huge win for our state. We know, and Martha's looking at me nodding, that uh, there will be significant impact in, in terms of what it's gonna do for Massachusetts, where we're gonna have tens of thousands of visitors. Jonathan described more excitement than Taylor Swift, which is saying something, having watched the frenzy this past summer. Um, with over 50,000 tickets already, already bought by, by fans from out of state. So we're really, really excited about that. 
We also think it's really exciting that it is happening here in New England. I will tell you that, you know, we're about um, ready to, to, to celebrate a big year in Massachusetts. We've got our 250th anniversary of the revolution coming up this year. I can't think of a better way to kick it off than with America's game here next week. Um, part of that history, is, as you know, um, includes um, um, kicking things off here with, with the Tea Party. The week after this, this big game, we're going to be celebrating the anniversary, actually, of the Boston Tea Party, where a bunch of people raised hell in a harbor just north of here that sort of kicked the whole thing off. Um, we're also going to be celebrating, of course, the shots heard around the world and the battles um, in Lexington and Concord. We're proud that Massachusetts is the birthplace of the National Guard, um, going back as far as 1636, and obviously significant, uh, significant start in, in the formation of the United States Army. We're also home uh, to, to the USS Constitution, which, as you know, Old Ironsides is the oldest, the world's oldest commissioned naval warship. And this year will mark the 225th anniversary of its very first voyage. Uh, we welcome you to step aboard if you have time up in uh, the Charlestown Navy Yard in, in, in Boston. So you look at all this, and, and you can tell why it's incredibly poignant for us in Massachusetts to be welcoming the players, the teams, the, the staff, their families, their friends, their supporters um, to Massachusetts for this game. Because we take a certain pride here in our state. We're home. We're home uh, in, in a state of first, first school, first college, first public library, countless innovations. We're home to some fantastic sports teams and rivalries, for sure. Um, but I think most importantly for these purposes, you know, we're, uh, we're the place where it all began. And this is a great, great country. And we are so lucky to, <clears throat> to live in this country. And we are so lucky to, to live in the democracy that we live in. And it's only a democracy because of people like you who serve and continue to serve and who are willing to serve. Um, and for that, we are, we are so, so grateful. We want to make sure that people know um, all of our wonderful historical sites will be open. We've got many to show off here. So in the midst of taking in uh, a lot of great football and festivities, we encourage people to, to get out and, and visit uh, what we have to offer um, and just to really celebrate this, this occasion. Jonathan mentioned um, something about you know, my athletic background. Um, I'm very much a has-been and a former point guard. But I do know what it takes to play D1 athletics. And I just want to say something to um, the players here today. It is, um, it is not an easy thing. It's not an easy thing that's gotten you to this point, to be able to play at the level that you're playing at. That, in and of itself, is a huge, huge accomplishment and a credit to you and to your families and to your coaches and all who continue to make that happen. And you know that goes for the captains and it goes for, for entire teams. Um, it is also the case that you do something that other players like me never did and never signed up for. And the fact that you go to a service academy and you're able to compete at that level and put the time in and do your classes and do your training, all knowing the service that you're going to be giving to our country is phenomenal, just phenomenal. And, you know, I'm, I'm very moved just thinking about it. And I just want to um, say, as, as, as one former captain to, to captains who stand head and shoulders above the rest of us, thank you for what you do. Thank you for the time that you put in. Thank you for the example that you are. Because as millions will watch a week from Saturday, you guys out there going at it, they are going to see the very best in service. They're going to see the very best in what this country is about and what we have to offer. And they're going to see teamwork and partnership and competition and fight. And all these things are so, so important. And most importantly, they're going to see you guys come together at the end of it, no matter what happens, and celebrate our great country and our great service academy. So I wanted to present you with some gifts representing what we think are the values of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, values that we think that, uh, that you fight for every single day and will continue to do so as you move forward. And um, at this time, if possible, I'd ask our great captains to come forward to receive gifts from the state of Massachusetts. Why don't you come, come right up here? Well, come right up here. Yeah. How are you? 
Nice to see you, Jason. All right, Will, nice to see you. I mean, come right here. They should see your faces, guys. Just stand here. I want to see you. All right, how you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Let me, let me tell you what we're going to do. So we're going to present you with uh, replicas uh, of bowls that were designed and produced by Paul Revere. You heard of Paul Revere? He is a pretty, like, seminal figure in the course of American history. And importantly, he's from here, right? So in addition to being an incredible soldier and founding member of the Sons of Liberty, he led the resistance that became the American Revolution. He also served as an officer in the Massachusetts militia. And uh, he happened to be on the side dabbling in all sorts of other things, including being a kick-ass silversmith, it turns out. And so part of what he was doing um, is producing incredible pieces of silver that live on today in museums really all around the world. And this is a very special Paul Revere bowl. It's a replica, of course, of what Paul Revere produced, but it is the Sons of Liberty bowl. And so we want you to um, have this as a token of our deep gratitude, deep appreciation for what you all represent, what America's game represents, and uh, hope that you come back when you have more time, because uh, right now you gotta get ready to play. Uh, when you have more time, come back and see Paul Revere's house in the north end of Boston. It's also home to great Italian neighborhoods and a good place to carbo load. Um, you come back and, and visit Paul Revere's uh, house and take in that history, but uh, we thought this was befitting of, of the occasion and, and what each of you represent and what America's game represents. So with that, I'm gonna produ uh, produce and, and send to, uh, give to you each uh, a Paul Revere bowl, okay? Great. Bethesda Naval, for real. So I'm not choosing sides either, because I got a lot of army in my in my uncles and my grandfather. Um, but I'm just reminded that I actually was born at Bethesda. By the way, we're going to wrap them up. When you we, we'll wrap them up. You don't have to worry about. Ringwood, New Jersey. He's a huge New England Patriots fan, Jimmy. Jimmy Cholo is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Will, where are you from? <laughs> I'm Leo, but I'm from oh, Austin, Texas. Leo. And we got our oh, slurs for today. Let's take this right. Let's take that right. You're from Austin? Austin, Texas, yes, There's we are. It's a place I wanted to visit. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it yes, is right. cool. All right. Well, gentlemen, come, come here. Let's take a picture with you all, okay? Sure. Um, Thank you, and best, uh, best of luck to both teams.
All I've heard this morning is beat Navy. Damn, how about beating Army? How's that sound, huh? We'll throw that one off. It's a little bit of a change of pace. A couple things, uh, if I may. Um, first of all, those Revere Bowls are beautiful. Very, very nice. Thank you, ma'am. Um, priceless. In the government sector, there's a limit on the amount of money that caps the gifts you can receive. So I'm sure we'll find something that says $24.99 on it rather than $25, so we won't have to return them, which would be great. Bob Sosi, who's here, MC, who is the um, voice of Navy athletics for 15 years. We miss you, Bob. We really do. You're tremendous. That great, booming voice that you had for all those years, calling the touchdowns and the three points uh, shots was is, is missed. But it's great to hear it again today, and glad to have you here. To have the governor here is special, and to us, it's it um, it's just so reflective of the unity, uh, in the sense of one is that is New England, that is Boston, that is this great state of Massachusetts. When Mike and I came to visit with the first overview of what the um, event could look like here in New England, and we were greeted by Governor Baker was here and um, Mayor Wu came aboard. Uh, we had all the contingent from Providence that was here. And in other words, it was a real team effort. Um, Bob Kraft and Jonathan have been extraordinary. There's no question about it because they provide the venue to host but it really, I feel that we're coming into an environment here that it's just the entire state of Massachusetts and all of New England is wel welcoming this game. And it's something that makes it special and um, just has a warm touch to, to every bit of it. There's no question about that. To uh, Mike, my comrade and buddy up at West Point, and to Jeff Munkin, who's worked for us at Navy, and we've known him for a long time. Uh, congratulations on all the good things that are happening up there. And uh, it, I don't think I'd be out of order to welcome you to the AAC as well. Uh, the American Athletic Conference this is going to be their first year in 24. That will be um, patriots, so to speak, within the conference. And uh, the reason I bring it up as a point of note is, you know, we will not play a game during the regular season. So the Army-Navy game will remain preserved as something that will happen after the AAC championship. Um, so the Army-Navy game, again, will be always continued in its truest historic form, which is separate from that, which would be regular season, which is great. Um, Kathy and I still have, my wife Kathy and I still have a home up in Cape Cod, so we make the trek every summer, and we work our way up through the um, 95 corridor. And I'll tell you right now, there's a, if there's a bottleneck on 95. It's not Massachusetts, ma'am. Okay, it's in Connecticut. That state of Connecticut is a killer. And if you think it's tough during the summer with tourist traffic, wait till you see a hundred buses coming up from Annapolis, Maryland with midshipmen blocking that traffic lane up in Connecticut. So they better be ready as we make the, uh, make the trek. The logistics were tough. There's no question. This is the first time we've been out of our, if I may, our zip code, and that being New York and Washington and Baltimore and Philly, you know, to make the stretch, so to speak, to come up here into New England. But there was great energy and great enthusiasm by the entire institution when Mike and I made the decision to come to Boston with the, of course, the concurrence of our superintendents that, uh, you know, we could make it happen. And uh, to bring up 4,000 mids which is normally an eight-hour ride up that corridor is, is, was quite a logistical challenge. But our people, I think, have done a great job. And um, as long as we get them up here safe and sound, and we expect everyone to be here, uh, of course, on the big day when we, uh, when we tee it up. Uh, just a quick story, if I may, before I introduce Brian, is, is how it all happened. Um, about 12 years ago, Mike had not yet taken the reins as the athletic director at Army. And uh, Boo Corrigan was the AD at Army. And um, we were cornered one day in a Patriot League meeting. We're both in the Patriot League, Army and Navy, and in Rhode Island for a meeting at Gurney's Resort. And Phil Bonifilco 
Bill, you've been mentioned a couple of times, but I don't want it to get beyond anyone of how instrumental he's been, with, of course, with the backing of both uh, Bob Kraft and, and Jonathan. But uh, Phil met us there one day on the veranda for lunch and said, listen, there is a venue that would welcome this game you know, beyond your wildest dreams. And, of course, it's Gillette Stadium and you know, the city of Boston. So we started that dialogue 12 years ago, and we had the first cycle of a, what we call an RFP process, and Boston threw their hat in the ring, and you know, we did all the visits and everything else, and for a couple of reasons it didn't quite work out, but the second round was really extraordinary. And Mike kind of alluded to it a minute ago. We came up, we visited, and of course, Bob Kraft was on a mission. There's no question about it. This was a passion of his to see this happen. He quartered me in his office with Mike and the two of us are against the wall. He goes, you see that? That's a guitar signed by Mick Jagger, the Rolling Stones. You see that? That's Bono. That's what he wore when he performed here. Okay, now we've got Taylor Swift has been in the mix. He, and he brought me over to the corner and said, you see that? That's even the Dalai Lama who we've hosted. But yet we've never hosted the Army-Navy game. We've got to find a way to make this happen. In that second round, you know, his enthusiasm, his energy, and Phil Botafuco and his team really are the reason that this all came, up, came, came into play. You know, we had options. Fifteen teams, I'm sorry, 15 cities bid this game and we narrow it down. But, Phil, you've set the bar. You know, we've been to some great venues. We've seen some wonderful as the general mentioned, red carpets rolled out. But I'm here to tell you that no one does it better in terms of pregame preparation than Gillette Stadium, Phil Botafuco and the Crafts, you know, and the team that Mike alluded to a moment ago. It's, 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 they've done a magnificent job. And, you know, we knew the energy was there when we sold, you know, our allotment of 25,000 tickets six months ago in about three weeks. Everything was gone, you know, just because the focal point being so special right up here in a city, in a state, in a region, in a um, group of professionals that really know how to get the job done without any question of a doubt. Now, Mike mentioned something that I think is important. I'm going to echo it. The game's changed. Division I athletics is different, and it's not going to get any better. We're looking at NILs. We're looking at transfer portals. We're looking to pay for play. All kinds of crazy things are going on right now in our business. But I'm telling you right now that you're looking at this game. You're looking at tradition. You're looking at history that won't change. You're looking at the last frontier, as far as I'm concerned, of true amateurism. Now, this game represents just that, the roots, the fiber of what amateurism is all about. Some of the values we've lost, and I'm embarrassed to say, as a longtime Division I athletic director, we've let get away. Our priorities have changed. It has now become such an incredible money-driven entity that it's, uh, it's um, depressing in some respects. But you won't lose it here. You won't lose it at Army. You won't lose it at Navy. You won't lose it at Air Force. Because these young men, as has been pointed out, represents the fiber of what this game is all about. And they have the responsibility to carry forward the traditions of what Army Navy represents. And we're extremely proud of what we as academies represent. And we won't let that ever get away. With that, I'm proud to introduce our head football coach in Brian Newberry. Brian has been a man that's been with us for four years, one of the most astute, defensive minds in the country. Uh, when there was a transition called for, you know, we looked no further than down the hallway to bring someone in that we had the greatest degree of confidence, could um, put the pieces together and make that transition smooth as can possibly be. And we're proud of what he's accomplished in the first year. Any head football coach will tell you, trying to put together a staff, trying to put together the, the pieces, change philosophies, is just an extraordinary challenge. And to be where we are today with what he's accomplished has made us all very, very proud. 
not just in Annapolis, but throughout the fleet in the world. So Brian, thanks for what you do. Thanks for what you represent. Thanks for being our leader. We're very, very proud to introduce to you, Coach Newberry. Coach. Thank you, Chet. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank um, Jonathan, the Kraft family, uh, and the New England Patriots organization uh, for hosting this. My first time up here uh, to let what a, what a beautiful uh, venue this is. I know our players are excited about it. I'm excited about it as well. I want to thank former Navy basketball great Derek Turner um, and Gus Herter, Senior Military Affairs Relations Advisor for USAA. Uh, our fantastic uh, presenting sponsor, as well as the four additional game partners. Um, we're excited to be here. Um, you know, I got to Navy in 2019. Uh, obviously my first game, uh, being a part of that in 2019, was, was, um, was special. Um, people try to tell you what it's like to coach in that game. Uh, I'd never been as a spectator, so my first time was, was as a coach. But you can't fully understand uh, until you participate in it. There's um, a certain kind of energy, a certain kind of patriotism, a certain kind of pride that you feel uh, when you walk onto the field. Um, great respect uh, for Army, uh, great respect for Coach Munkin and what he's done there, uh, for those cadets and the way they handle their business, uh, the way they play. Uh, I admire the way that um, they play from an effort standpoint, from a fight standpoint. Um, and excited about this game because I feel like our guys do the same thing. I think uh, that there's no game in the country, and there's a lot of great rivalries, um, nothing quite like Army-Navy. There's a lot of intersectional rivalries, um, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Georgia, Alabama, so on and so forth, but there's no game like this. Um, there's no effort put forth in a game uh, like the Army-Navy game, and there's so much at stake. Um, but such a great mutual respect uh, between both teams and coaches. Uh, great respect, as I said, for Coach Munkin and their staff. I know several guys on that staff. Uh, just just um, couldn't say enough good things about them. Um, the nerves you have in this game are, are unreal. I was in the press box in 2019, and uh, so much adrenaline going through my body that I could hardly write uh, notes on, on a notepad. Uh, a lot of great memories. Uh, from the years that we won uh, and, and years that we lost, you know, seeing the uh, singing second, um, you know, seeing the midshipmen up in the stands, the smile on their faces, the joy in our players' faces, uh, and when we lost, you know, seeing the grief and the devastation on our, on our players' faces, uh, just knowing how important this is and what it means to so many people and, and, and what it represents, um, you know, the. Um, um, Pressure is a privilege, and there's a lot of pressure in this game. Um, but it's pressure because it's such an important game. And I uh, just can't say enough good things about um, the guys I get to coach on a daily basis. I feel like I get the best job in the country. Um, you know, it's a joy to go every, to work every day knowing that you're coaching some of the best and the brightest young men in the country. Uh, and they're going to be playing some of the best and the brightest young men in the country on Saturday. So just uh, really blessed to be a part of it, really fortunate. Um, you know, humbled when you coach in this game, when you walk on the field. Um, great responsibility, but man, you know, what an unbelievable privilege it is to get to coach these guys and to get to coach in this game. That means so much to so many people, uh, not just the guys on the field, but obviously uh, those that have served and those that are currently serving. An opportunity to showcase our players um, and how they handle their business. Uh, opportunity for Army to do the same thing an opportunity to, 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 to share light on our armed services, our armed forces, and uh, for those people that have served and are serving currently. So uh, just great to be a part of it. Uh, we've got three captains here with us today, really two named captains and one that might as well be a captain for us. Uh, these guys have, are, are special young men that have, have been through a lot of adversity, both personally you know, and as a football team. We've had some adversity to fight through. Guys have remained uh, and stayed the course, remained tremendous leaders for us. Will Harbor from Frisco, Texas, linebacker, a three-year starter now, right, Will? Yeah, um, represents everything that Navy football and the Naval Academy is all about. Jacob Busick, uh, defensive end um, from Maryland, local product, right? Uh, Jacob 
uh, named captain, tore his bicep third game of the year uh, playing SMU. I'm sorry, playing Memphis. Um, didn't think he'd make it back. We found out this week they may have a shot to play in the game. Looks like he's going to. So we're, we're fired up about that as soon as we find out. So, well, come on up. Let's make this trip together then. Uh, but, again, phenomenal young man. Uh, can't say enough good things about him and his leadership. Uh, sometimes when you have adversity and you have an injury like that, a player starts to get checked out. Uh, Jacob has not done that. He's, he's, he's continued to lead our program um, and pour into our players and, and help in any way that he can. Um, and then Xavier Arline, a um, guy that I have a ton of respect for him, and I'm glad he's sitting here, uh, has been through some adversity himself. You know, anytime you move a quarterback and you move positions, um, you know, the quarterbacks don't always handle that well. And he handled it like a champ, embraced his role, did everything he could to help his program, kept a smile on his face, kept leading. Right now he's back leading us as our quarterback. And just uh, proud of you, man. Can't say enough good things about, about all of you. And so with that being said, right, you guys got to come up now, right? So come on up. <clears throat> I mean, wow, what an amazing opportunity it is to be here today. Um, never been to Boston before, so I want to thank, thank Boston for hosting this game. Uh, you know, the ride in, just gorgeous. Uh, and then the stadium, the Patriots, thank, thank you guys. Such an amazing place. I mean, looking at the stadium, the, the jumbo screen with Army Navy across it, I, I mean, I just can't wait. Um, thank you, everybody, and the support staff for making today happen. Uh, like I said, it's such an amazing opportunity to be here today um, in this wonderful event with all of you, uh, and thank you.